Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden and welcome to my July front garden tour and my last front garden tour in this garden. It is so bittersweet for me. I'm so excited for the next part of my journey, right? I'm so excited to move. We move in about two weeks. We get possession of the new garden, new home, I should say. It's a it's a home. It's not just a garden, but of course I'm focusing on the garden. Uh, we get possession about in about a week and a half, two weeks. And um, so this is going to be my last garden tour. So on my channel, those of you who don't watch me regularly, I do a garden tour, a front garden tour and a back garden tour every month, just so that we can see the progress throughout the seasons and I love doing this I love that I've done this now that I'm moving I am so happy to have this record this history of this garden every single month for the past two years basically so this is my last one I'm so excited about it um, but again I'm I'm sad. I am very sad. Um, so what I wanted to do today is I wanted to do a really in-depth garden tour. A lot of you have been asking me to specifically point out all of the plants. And so I will try my best to point out every single plant that I can, give you guys a little um, review on the plant, I guess I would say, and then uh, whether I'm going to plant that plant in my new garden or whether I'm going to move on to other things. So let me take you around. It's looking beautiful. We've been in a heat wave for the past week or so, um, and now it's finally starting to cool down. So it feels really, really good today. So let me turn the camera around and we will get started. So let me start off with this vista. This is hands down my favorite view of my home, of this home. This is, I live on a corner lot and this is the front of my home. This is what I consider the front of my home. Even though my house faces the street that way, because of the corner lot and because the way the hardscaping was in this garden, this is the front and I love it and I think it's so beautiful and I'm going to miss this. Everything is looking really, really good right now. The crepe myrtle tree, look at that, it is starting to bloom. I'm so excited. It's just glorious right now. It's absolutely beautiful and it makes me feel so good sitting here and looking at what I've done. I just, I feel so proud. So <laughs> I feel like that's gonna be the theme of this, of this garden tour is me just being so proud of what I've done. So I appreciate you all watching. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start over at the oak tree garden bed because if I'm gonna go through every single plant, what I normally do is I kind of just walk around willy nilly and I need to kind of be a little bit more organized for this, um, this tour just so I don't really miss over any, skip over anything important. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the oak tree garden bed, make my way down the cottage garden bed, make my way over the big bed right here, and then finish up in the cut flower garden over there. So it's kind of like organized. <laughs> See what I'm getting at? Organized. So let's come over here to the oak tree garden bed. This oak tree garden bed I installed last year. I'm gonna say this is a valley oak which is a california native oak and for those of you who don't live in california our oaks are not like the oaks that you would find in the south um, or anywhere else in the country they are native oak trees and they are drought tolerant and so that means they actually don't like too much water. They actually don't want to be inundated with water. One of the worst things that you can do to an oak tree in California is plant lawn all the way up to it. And because what that does, you have to water the lawn. That gives the oak tree too much water. It starts getting, you know, um, sick and fungus and mold and all that kind of stuff. And then eventually, you know, hundreds of year old oak tree will die in just a couple years because somebody was mistakenly planting a lawn around the oak tree. So I knew that because when I was growing up, the house I was growing up in, we actually had an oak tree in our front garden. And the previous owners or the previous owners before those had actually planted a whole bunch of shrubs in the front around the oak tree. And there were sprinklers on it. And so years and years and years and years of sprinklers caused the oak tree, and you know, I'm sure other things as well, but it basically caused the oak tree to die. And the oak tree actually fell over and smashed our car when I was growing. I mean, I think I was, I think I was in high school at this time. It actually fell over and smashed our car and missed our home by like 
inches, inches. And it was a giant oak tree, like bigger than this, I wanna say. I remember climbing in it when we, when we first moved there. But going through that experience, it taught me that here in California, it's really important to think about what you're planting under the oak tree. And now, you know, I know that on the other side of the fence is my back garden and there's only so much that I can do, but I knew with this garden bed right here, I knew I could do the best I could to make it appropriate for planting underneath an oak tree. And so what I did is I followed the Oak Tree Foundation's recommendations for plants that are appropriate underneath an oak tree. So here you can see I have Liriope. I love this print plant. It's a pretty, pretty kind of strappy leaf plant. And then it does bloom these beautiful purple blooms right there. Behind that, I do have some sea lavender or status, but actually let me show you this one over here. Uh, look at how beautiful this is. This is just, oh my goodness, it is just such a beautiful plant. I have pink cushion flower here. I have citronelle uh, hookra right there. Now this one, mm, it just kind of did okay. I wanted a pop of brightness in this garden bed to kind of counteract the other dark greens that I have. And it looks, it looks good. It looks really good over here, but this is morning sun and you can see it is still scorching a little bit over here. So I thought it would get more shade from the oak tree, but it definitely didn't. So, but that's okay. It is still surviving. It's still doing well. From the oak tree over, that is my neighbor's garden. And I actually redid his garden as well. So that's looking really good. Another plant that I will definitely 100% repeat in my new garden is the Southern Sword Fern right here. It's very similar to the Kimberly Queen Fern, but it's not. It is not. It's a little bit softer than the Kimberly Queen Fern. The reason why I love this plant so much is because I live in Northern California, Zone 9B. We are hot. We are dry the weather is intense and this is one of the few ferny like plants that can that can handle our temperatures it does like more shade you know i've noticed that when it is in too much sun um i used to have them on the other side of this fence right here which would like that's west that way so those were getting west facing sun so that was just too much the hot afternoon sun but if you put it in kind of like a part shade location it is going to be so happy. And these, these are, these I planted very small. They were so small. They've tripled in size already and they are, they're beautiful. And they're so easy to divide you guys. So if you need a spot with some really, really pretty greenery um, and you just need to fill up some space pretty quickly, I think that these are beautiful. I love them. One plant that I don't know if I'm gonna repeat, I don't wanna say for sure because I'll probably change my mind but it is the plumbago right here Cape plumbago and you have to give these guys a little bit of credit these guys have been through the ringer in the past couple years so these plants were actually over there where my cottage garden bed is those were the only plants that were in my cottage garden bed and I transplanted them in the middle of summer and I moved them over here to really horrible compacted soil they survived they did good they did well um, and then now instead of letting them kind of just grow how they want to grow I'm kind of forcing them up to the fence and trying to kind of control them a little bit so it's also my fault how I'm growing these plumbago but they're just kind kind of a little wild. You can see how they grow. They just grow these long stems um, and they're just, they're just a little crazy. They're just a little wild. I love the color. The color is incredible. It's like a true blue. I think it is so, so pretty. And I would love it if the plant was a little bit more compact. I wish that they would make a dwarf version of this. Oh my God, wouldn't that be amazing? Now they do make a dwarf version, like a ground cover, but it doesn't have the same blue color. It's like, it's not as pretty as that. Um, so they need, they need to make a true dwarf plumbago. I think that that would be really, really good to have. So yeah, so overall, the oak tree garden bed is wonderful my goal for this garden bed was it for, to have it be more natural more hands-off more just 
I don't want to say native because it's not native, but just, just, just more natural looking. Right. And I think that it completely, uh, it, it worked. I'm happy with it. I'm happy with my plant selections. I think it worked. And remember, this is only a one year old garden bed. So these plants are going to get even bigger. It's going to fill in more and it's going to look even more beautiful. So I'm really, really happy with this bed. I'm proud of this bed. All right. So let's move on. Here is the fairy garden right here. It was so sweet. Um, somebody actually left my daughter notes, my daughter's notes, saying how much they were going to miss us and how much they appreciated the fairy garden. Now, I don't want to talk too much about the new owners, but they do have children. So I'm crossing my fingers <laughs> that this will continue. The fairy garden will continue. We will see. Um, the new owners are gardeners, which is very exciting. And we will be meeting them to kind of go over everything. I, you know, I am, I'm going to tell them that they can feel free to take out whatever they want. They can change whatever they want. It is their garden now. It is not mine. Um, but I'm here to answer any questions that they have with the garden. And I also will be more than willing to help them take out like the vining plants, like the um, English ivy espalier that I have, the the honeysuckle. I'll, you know, I will, I will help them take it out and kill that if they don't want to deal with that. So we are meeting them, I think in a week and, um, and we will discuss discuss all of that but I feel really confident to say I think my garden is going to be in really good hands which is which is I, I can't even tell you all it is such a relief it makes me feel makes me feel so much better about this whole process anyway so the fairy garden you know um that is something that we're definitely going to miss um I don't know I'll have to ask the new owners if they want us to leave all the fairy stuff I have a feeling my girls will want to take it uh then we come this way and this is my cottage garden bed and this bed is probably what I am most proud of in my garden because the transformation of this garden bed was huge. Like I said, when we moved in, it was literally just five or six of those plumbago shrubs, completely overgrown, uh, rock mulch. It, it just, it just didn't look good. It just didn't look good. So I'm so proud of how it looks now. My goal for this was, um, to have kind of like a, uh, over, overgrown, overflowing, uh, floral cottage garden bed that people can walk down and kind of look at each flower as they walk down. And I really think that I accomplished that. I think that it looks just so good. I'm just so proud of it. So let's see, let me go from here. So over here we have, um, Stormburst Superbina from Proven Winners. I love this plant and this plant will actually, uh, winter over for me, for us here. So they can leave that here. This is pure white Marguerite Daisy, which I probably need to cut back, but I'm just going to leave it. And oh man, this plant, this plant is a winner. This is actually three plants right here, three four inch cans that I planted there. And they are getting big and they are beautiful. And they're just one of those classic flowers that go so well in a cottage garden. So this was definitely a winner. Right here on my obelisk that you cannot even see, <laughs> this is Orange Appeal um, Thunbergia or Black Eyed Susan. It was slow to get started, but seriously in just the last two weeks it's it's gone crazy beautiful now I am gonna have I not gonna have I want to take this obelisk do I want to take it or am I just gonna leave it for them I might just leave it for them because it matches this arch and I'm not taking this arch hmm I'll have to think about that um so I might have to take this out. I might have to cut this back. But I'm going to take, you know what? I'm just going to leave the obelisk. It just is meant to be here. And I cannot bring myself to cut this down. Uh, it just, it just looks so pretty right here. Let me get out of the way. This is unplugged pink salvia. This I actually had in my pots last year in my back garden, kind of by my patio. And I transplanted them this year. And I actually did the root washing method when I transplanted them. I was trialing it out. Out. Um, the root washing method is actually where you remove all the soil from around the roots so you can make sure that the roots aren't circling on itself. 
it was a lot of work for something that was just kind of, I don't know. I don't really notice much of a difference. I don't think I'll be doing the root washing method, at least on perennials anymore, annuals or perennials. Really, they say the root washing method is really good for trees and woody shrubs. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't think I'll waste my time doing it on perennials anymore. I don't think it was worth it, but they do look really good. And these plants look fantastic beautiful. So this is unplugged pink. This is very similar to um, rock and fuchsia salvia, but this one is smaller, whereas the rock and fuchsia salvia will get three to four feet tall. This is beautiful. I will definitely have this in my garden next year. I will definitely have this in my garden next year. I will definitely have that in my garden next year. I, I just love these plants and they're all perennials for me here in zone 9b. Up here, these are summer drummer alliums that I am in love with. I've already purchased more of them online and they're scheduled to be delivered to me. Uh, so I will be purchasing, I will have more of these. I love them so much. They're so tall. They are, let me get up here. They're probably six feet tall, which is amazing. And I just love how they look. I'm just gonna leave them like that. You know, I just think that they are the prettiest things. I, I, they're just fantastic. Underneath that is Artist Pearl Floss Flower. I will not be repeating this next year. I don't like the color. It's supposed to be like a pale white, white and look like kind of cotton balls. It just, it, you know, I just don't like it. I don't like the color. I love Artist Blue Floss Flower. It is such a fantastic plant and it is such a good color of blue, but this is just, it's just not gonna work for me anymore. Snow Princess Lobularia, of course, fantastic. This is a romance pink Nemesia, and I'm I'm impressed that it's even hanging on this much, right? Because it's been hot. It's been 109 degrees, 106 degrees, and the Nemesia, instead of just dying, it's still here, which is fantastic. I do have to tell you all though, I will be planting a romance mulberry next year because when I was at Four Star Greenhouse and I smelled it, it smelled so good. It was incredible, the smell. So it's very, I mean, it's, uh, mulberry is a little bit darker than the pink, but the smell just makes it 100% worth it. Right here, I have lime green Nicotiana. This was inspired by Erin from The Impatient Gardener. She has these all over her garden. They are beautiful. I love it. It did take two years to establish, so you have to be you have to be patient with this one, but I just love the lime green color, and it has been blooming its head off all season long. It is such a good plant. One that I probably will not repeat is this one. This is cashmere bouquet or Mexican hydrangea. It is um, beautiful. It, it is it is a uh, alternative to a hydrangea here in heat. I just, I'm, I'm really nervous for how fast it's growing. <laughs> I'm gonna have to tell the new owners. I had these two little sticks here, just two little sticks, and it is taking over. And everybody talks about the false sem spirea right here and how like invasive it can be and how much it can take over. And look at this, the the Mexican hydrangea is taking over. The Mexican hydrangea is taking over the false stem spirea. I have to tell Steph from Hooked and Rooted this because that is just, <laughs> that's kind of scary. Honestly, it's kind of scary. So, you know, this is another one um, that that I might I might have to kill. So what I'll do is I will cut it down and then I have this stuff, I'll put it on the screen right now, but basically you paint it on the stem and it will kill it down to the roots. And so um, if, if plants get a little out of hand, I always use that just because I know that that's, that's gonna take care of it right away. So this is a beautiful plant. It is really, look at that, it looks like a hydrangea. It's just, it's just a bit much. <laughs> it's just a bit much. Another one that I will absolutely repeat times a thousand is Scavola. This is Whirlwind Blue Scavola. The hotter it gets here, the happier it gets here. I just, it's just a fantastic plant. And then hiding under here, this is the new Selenia Yellow. This is probably my favorite Selenia out of the new begonias that are being released from Proven Winners next year. Um, the Selenia series, the Selenia 
was an established series and proven winners just said okay yes they're the best of the best we want them in our line because the point of proven winners is to, is to get the best of the best so now the selenia series of proven winners these are riger begonias um proven winners has them and honestly this yellow one is hands down my favorite i love that combination that it has right there so pretty Okay, then we have a limelight hydrangea that's just as happy as a clam right here, loving its life. Junior Walker Catmint, beautiful. I've cut it back. It's starting its second flush of blooms right now, looking really, really pretty. I will definitely repeat this in my next garden, just not as much. <laughs> so I think I planted 12 12 plants right here and that was too much <laughs> that was too much i was i was i was tripped up by the name when i heard junior walker i assumed it was a mini version of walker low walker's low and it's not it's it's just as vigorous as walker's low so that will probably need to be trimmed out a little bit i do have peonies that i'm very sad to leave but i will not be taking them shirley temple peony bull of beauty peony dr alexander fleming peony and then this beautiful one this is an Edo peony this is bartzella i will not be taking this because this peony belonged to the mother of my neighbors over there the mother passed away and they gave me this peony and I planted it here so that when they drove by, they could see the peony. So I will be leaving it here. I think it's important to leave it here. Again, I will talk to the new gardener, the, the, the new homeowners. I, can't, I keep focusing on my garden and not my home. The new homeowners, and if they want me to dig it up and take it with me, if they don't want it, then I absolutely will take it. But you know, we'll have to wait and see. So yeah, so that is my oak tree garden bed and my cottage garden bed. So let me move on this way. I will come and I'll walk up this pathway to my gated garden bed. But right here, this rose arch right here, this is Eden Climbing Roses. I love this. I love it so much. I had a flush of blooms. I haven't deadheaded anything yet, um, but look at how beautiful. Can you see that? Oh my goodness. It is just the prettiest thing. I love it so much. I wish I could pick the whole thing up and put it into my new garden. Um, I'm, I'm gonna leave it you guys I'm just gonna leave it it just doesn't feel right to take all these plants out of their spot you know I mean this this garden took work to do and it took time and it took patience and it just doesn't feel right to me to move things to the new garden it just it just doesn't feel right to me so I I am going to leave these here. I know that that makes some of you nervous or anxious, you know, because yes, normally you would dig them out. But like I said, the people who are purchasing our home are gardeners as well, and they do have children. And they did mention to us that they love this and they felt like princesses and all that beautiful stuff. So it just makes me feel like I do want to leave it here. So these are from heirloomroses.com. I got them not last November, but the num November before, planted them. They were tiny little things and now they are so beautiful. I love them. I just, I cannot say enough about own root roses. So normally roses are um, grafted onto another rootstock and I just, heirloom roses have all their own rootstock and so it takes a little bit longer for the plants to get established but once they do they take off and they're healthier and they're more robust and they're just better plants and so I just feel so strongly about that and I feel like that I'm I'm I just I just love them I just love them so much so I will be repeating this in my next garden um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it here underneath there I do have proven winners um, uh, Pentis, I can't remember the name of this, but this is basically the Starflower Purple. And I used to have the Pink Pentis, uh, pink pentis flower last year. I loved the pink one. I am not loving the purple one. It is not doing well. I had three planted here and three planted here. Two of them died over here. I have one left over here that's just just hanging on, just barely hanging on. Um, and then these this this is probably the best one i have it's a very pretty color it's just struggling and i'm not sure why because usually star flower does pretty good for me um it's just really not not having a good time these days so anyway that's probably one that i will skip 
Over here, I have some bearded iris that I do not know the name of. I'm leaving the foliage up. It could probably be cut back now. Actually, it could be cut back now. Um, so I probably should come in here and do that. Behind there, well, I will show you all my Laura Pedlum. One of my favorite plants, I have to say. It's just one of those structural sleeper plants. This is known as Chinese fringe flower or Laura Pedlum. It is such a fantastic plant because you can see it has this dark foliage that contrasts a lot of green foliage that we have in our garden. But the fringe flowers, I can see a couple over there. I'll show you in a little bit. The fringe flowers that come late winter, early spring are just such a welcome pop of color that I just, I cannot imagine not having this plant in my garden just for that early, early, early season color. It's just, it's just beautiful. These right here, these luscious lantana citron are kind of the same as these um, salvia that I had. They were in my pots last year and I transplanted them over here using the root washing method. They're just, look at how happy these lantana are. It's just, they are so beautiful. I love the color. I think I like this better than the lemon tart that I have in my garden, in my um, pots in my backyard this year. I just think that they are so pretty. So this is Luscious Lantana Citron. This is their second year and they are just thriving with the heat that we have. Back behind there, I have Supertunia Vista Snowdrift, and this is four plants, <laughs> literally four plants, probably too much, right? But it is very, very pretty. Behind that, I have Augusta Lavender Heliotrope, that's beautiful. This plant, I this is this is a good thing to point out. So I had these in my three big white pots last year, and I had the sun credible sunflowers over them, and they were just kind of not doing great. They would barely bloom. They didn't get very big. They just didn't look good. And I thought, oh, well, I just I can't grow these plants. These Augusta lavenders, I can't grow them. They're not good for me. And then someone at Proven Winners told me like go put them in the ground and go give them some space and I promise you they'll do well. And she was totally right. She was 100% right. They're beautiful. They just needed some space. I don't think they're very good pot plants. I think they're much better in the landscape and they, they're just gorgeous. So pretty. And then behind that is Meteor Shower Verbena, which will definitely be in my next garden. I love this plant. I love Verbena Benariensis. Love it, love it, love it. I think it's so pretty. I think it's so whimsical. It's, so, it's just such a fantastic plant to have. But Verbena Benariensis, in, at least in my area, is extremely invasive. <laughs> it just reseeds itself prolifically, like prolifically. I planted this by seed in my garden the first year that I was in here, so 2020, and I'm still getting seedlings all over the place from that one planting I had. And so I will never plant the regular verbena benariensis again, but I will plant meteor shower verbena. This one is not totally seedless. It's not totally sterile, but it is a lot less are a lot more sterile than the generic ones. So I'm really excited about these. I will be planting a ton of them in my garden next year. Over here, Oklahoma Redbud, beautiful. I'm so sad to be leaving it. <laughs> it's not even a year old and it's looking beautiful. I love it. Oh, I love it. Okay. Over here, I have my Clematis armandii snowdrift. I grew this, I've told you all this a thousand times. I grew this from a cutting that was maybe that big, maybe, maybe that big. Um, uh, let's see, so this is probably its third year and it's going crazy and it's beautiful and it blooms early, early, early season, just like the Chinese fringe flower. And it's just, I just love the foliage on it. I love the strappy foliage. So my plan is actually to take some cuttings of this guy um, because I just love, I got this cutting from my neighbor who lives down the street that way. He's an amazing gardener. And so he gave me the cuttings of this and I just wanna take the same plant. I want 
the same mother plant because it just kind of means a lot to me. Um, so I will be taking this one, but just cuttings of it. You can see it's getting a little out of control. It, it does need to be cut back, but I just love how it looks. I just, oh my goodness, I just think it's so pretty. It's just the prettiest thing. Under here, this is a Miscanthus Cabaret. Um, I, it hasn't been in here long enough to, for me to give it a good recommendation. Right, right now, I don't really think it's anything special, honestly. <laughs> but, you know, I got the recommendation from Laura from Garden Answer, and hers is a lot more grown than mine is. Um, but yeah, I'm just, it's just kind of fine. It's just fine, is what I'll say. Uh, this one right here, this is Coleus Torchlight. This one's looking really good. This is Double Up Pink Begonia. These are looking good. And this is Watermelon, um, Mini Me Watermelon. Uh, I don't like the Mini Me Watermelon in the sun. I don't think it looks very pretty. I like it much better in the shade. I'll show you all that a little bit. This garden bed is just kind of weird because you can see, here's the Torchlight Coleus. Here's two more Torchlight Coleus. Look at these. They're like dead. They're they're not dead, but they are definitely not happy. So I don't know. And then you can see here, here's a double up pink begonia. They all have water. They all have water. And then here's another double up pink begonia. So everything's just kind of off in this garden bed. So yeah, it, it is it is what it is. All right, so moving into the gated garden bed. This one is getting taken over. <laughs> by the Supertunia Mini Vista Scarlet and Mini Vista Ultramarine. They look so pretty, but holy moly. So Supertunia Mini Vistas are supposed to be smaller and have a better growth habit than the regular Vistas. And they do, they absolutely do. But I think the important thing for us to remember in warm climates, you know, zone eight, nine, 10, we have such a longer growing season than everybody else, right? So we have like, I am two months ahead. When I was in Michigan and Ohio, I was looking at everybody's, um, everybody's gardens and it was like, man, I am two months ahead of everybody. All my plants are so much bigger than theirs and it's just because they've had longer to grow. So, you know, the <laughs> Super Junior Mini Vista Scarlet and the Ultramarine, they're getting big. They are get, they've had plenty of time to grow. I've been fertilizing them. They're super happy and they are getting big. So I did have to come in and I did have to make a little pathway. I actually think it looks nicer now. <laughs> it looks neater now. So I'm happy about that. Over here, I have another limelight that's looking really good. This limelight, I always have trouble with. It always looks like it has chlorosis. And I do acidify it, probably not as, as much as I should, um, but it's just it's just one of those things. It just struggles. It's just a struggle to keep these guys happy. And it's just, you know, I love hydrangeas. Hydrangeas were my wedding flower. So I cannot imagine having a garden without hydrangeas, but they are more difficult to keep happy. So then over here, this is a plant that I will definitely be repeating. So basically what I'm saying is I am going to repeat the limelight hydrangea. I will be repeating this Helen von Stein, Sal uh, Helen von Stein lamb's ear, not salvia. This is just such a fantastic plant. It's such a wonderful, wonderful plant. It's always so happy. I never have to worry about it. I love the silvery foliage. It's just, it's just the best plant. This is a... Arb, and I don't even remember the name of it, but I know I will not be repeating it. I just don't like it. I just don't think it looks good. I don't like the color of it. Um, arbs are a stretch for us here. Uh, they just they just don't grow as well, which is, if you look at my neighbor across the street, she has some beautiful arbs growing, but I just, I don't know. I just don't like this one very much. Mist expires salvia, one of the best, best plants that was was ever developed um these look a little rough because when i did have my sweet peas growing on this fence they kind of pushed all of them over so these don't look as big and full as they normally do you can see they're kind of pushed over but i know that that's the sweet peas fault i knew that i knew it was happening as the sweet peas were growing and that's just part of the problem when I cram everything into a small space is I know some things are gonna suffer. So these, 
Mystic Spires Salvia, Helen Von Stein Lamb's Ear, and Limelight Hydrangea, 100% I will absolutely repeat. Coming over here, are you guys sick of me talking about Surefire Rose Begonia? <laughs> <laughs> but look at how pretty it is. I mean, it's just the most beautiful plant. I love it. So this is Surefire Rose Begonia. It's from Proven Winners. They have Surefire Red and then Surefire White is new. I will be growing Surefire White for sure. I'll be growing Surefire Rose as well. I want to see how Surefire White does in my garden because again when I was at the Proven Winners uh, display gardens my begonia looked different than their begonia. Don't repeat this but my begonia looked way better than their begonia. <laughs> it was just it was taller it was thicker it was more robust um, and so I want to see how Surefire White does in my garden. I bet you it's going to be so pretty. So I'm really excited to try the Surefire White next year but the Surefire Rose is just I mean, you just cannot beat this plant. This plant is so fantastic. Behind there, I have a Wichita Blue Juniper that I love. I already have plans for two of these in my garden. One of them is going to go right next to my office. I, I just love this plant. I love it so much. I love the silvery color. Can you imagine this the Wichita Blue Juniper with the Surefire White all underneath it? Won't that be pretty? And then maybe another Limelight Hydrangea right next to it. Ah! Oh! It's going to be so pretty. It's going to be beautiful. So you can see, I am already planning. And this is a Limelight Prime along with that one over there. You can see they're a little bit behind the regular Limelights, probably because these get less sun. These are closer to the house, the north facing house, um, but they're coming and they're really pretty. And I like how strong the stems are on the Limelight Prime. Um, so I probably will be planting a lot of Limelight Prime versus the regular Limelights. Over here, this is lungwort, or um, am I gonna say this wrong, plumbago? No, not plumbago. Pulmonaria, there we go, <laughs> pulmonaria. So these three are just generic pulmonaria. You can see the ones that have a little bit more sun are kind of struggling a little bit, but the one back here in more shade, the color is looking a lot better. I have, I think these are earwigs that are attacking them right now. This one over here is Pulmonaria Spot On by Proven Winners. The thing I noticed the difference between the Spot On and the regular generic one is the Spot On, the blooms were more blue and they bloomed later on in the season. Um, that's, I mean, it's kind of hard because these are like three years old and this one's only one year old. So it's not a fair comparison, but I can tell you that's, that's the thing that I've noticed thus far. Man, what is attacking? Goodness. All right, I gotta, I gotta deal with that. These are Jack Frost Brennera. They're looking fantastic other than being eaten. They've doubled, tripled in size since I planted them. I feel like I only planted them like a month ago. Um, and they're looking really, really good. This one right here is um, tough stuff. Tiny tough stuff. <laughs> Tiny Tough Stuff Mountain Hydrangea. I don't think I'm going to be repeating this one. It's very pretty and I could keep it blue. Um, but the thing I don't like about it is it blooms and then it has new f new growth that comes out here that kind of covers the blooms. So I, don't, I just don't think I'm going to be repeating that one. It's fine. It's very pretty. Um, I just don't think I'm going to be repeating it. And then I have my English Ivy Espalier that I love, but it is a lot of work. You can see when I was on vacation... They came and they kind of grew, and so I have to come out here and I have to scrub these off. Um, but it's just so pretty. I just love it so much. So this is another thing that I have to ask the new owners if they want me to take this off. If they do, I will just cut it down here at the bottom, and then I'll just kill it at the roots, and, and that will be it. That will be it for my espalier that I love so much. It's their house. We'll, we'll have to wait and see <laughs> what they want to do. Okay, then over here, this is a plant that I'm so sad that I'm leaving. This is my star jasmine. It's planted down there. It comes all the way around here and all the way around on the other side. This is a plant I got from my daughters for Mother's Day a couple years ago. I love it. 
this is a plant that I would dig up and take with me if it wasn't so big. It's just, it's just too big. Um, so this one is really pretty. I just, to me, it makes it feel like it's just a uh, secret garden. I just love it. I just love it. I, there's nothing else to say. I love it so much. This is um, pufferfish hydrangea starting to bloom and looking very, very pretty very pretty. Okay, then coming over here to underneath, kind of right by my front door, underneath my portico or whatever you want to call it, my front porch area. This is my shade window box. You can kind of see how it's doing. It's looking really, really pretty. I have the hippo pink polka dot plant back here. Um, it's not as pink as I would like it to be just because it has a little bit more shade. I think it would do better with a little bit more dappled sun. The thing that is looking incredible right now is the um, Color Blaze Mini Me Watermelon. So you can see this is what it looks like in the shade and it it looks beautiful in the shade. It looks so, so pretty. What I don't think is looking very good is the diamond snow euphorbia. Like that looks good right there, but you can see like there's green foliage that's growing. All this is diamond snow, green foliage coming. You can see there's the flowers back there. I could probably come in and I could probably cut it all back. I think that that might help it, um, but it's just stretching for a little bit more sun. So it's doing well, it's thriving. It's just stretching just a little bit. Here's another one of those Southern sword ferns. You can see how big they get. This needs to be moved. It's just kind of taking over. Um, so I will let the new owners deal with that. This is my Mrs. Tingley Camellia. This is another one I'm really sad to be leaving, but again, it's, this is its this is its home, so I'm gonna leave it there. And then uh, an ostrich fern right there that I love. I will definitely be repeating that. Um, and then just a whole bunch of hostas and, and all that fun stuff. I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna miss it all. This is so bittersweet. <laughs> ah! You can see my crepe myrtle. Look at that color. I just, oh, I love it. I think there's some crepe myrtles in the new home. I have to kind of check and see, see what it is. Okay, so here's a gold dust plant, gold dust akuba. It is a shade plant. It loves the shade. You can see it's starting to get big, so it's starting to get a little bit more afternoon sun. It's kind of stretching out this way. Um, so I think eventually this guy's going to have to be cut back or moved. Uh, but for right now, it looks really good. This is the rock and fuchsia salvia you can see how big it is compared to the other one it looks it's beautiful i love it and the hummingbirds the hummingbirds love this plant that is definitely one i'll be repeating this uh vivid orchid hoopla supertunia this is new for 2024 this this is a winner you guys this is definitely a winner of a plant it's very pretty it does very well and you can just see it from so far away like it's just something that it just catches your eye. So that is a really, really good new introduction from Proven Winners. So I'm proud of them for that. Another limelight hydrangea right here. And this is Super Bean a Whiteout. This guy, well, this is this is like five plants, honestly. Now they've kind of all merged into one, but this guy has been here for three years now and happy as a clam. It's beautiful. When I fertilize it, the whole thing gets covered with white blooms. When I don't fertilize it, it's so pretty. Like it just, it can just handle its, itself here. It's just, it's so pretty. I love this plant. This is one I will definitely be repeating. Uh, up here, let's see, should I go the other way? Let me go the other way. Let me show you from the other side. So let's see, this is just a Dusty Miller, just like a generic Dusty Miller. I actually got this from cuttings from the same neighbor that I got my Clematis armandii from. Uh, very, very pretty. And then you can see down here, lining my pathway, this is lemon coral sedum. And this has been such a fun plant to have lining my pathway. I just, I really love it. And I'm definitely gonna repeat it. I don't know if I'm gonna repeat it as uh, lining pathways, cause I really don't have any pathways right now. So I haven't really gotten that far, um, but it's just been such a fun, 
hedge to have. I, I don't know. It's kind of like um, airport runway lights, right? Like go this way up to the front door. I just, I really, really enjoy it. And uh, lemon coral sedum is an evergreen for us here in zone 9B. And it will last every once in a while. It kind of gets kind of gets yucky like that so um i will come in and i will replace it and it's it's just really easy right here you can see more of my mystic spire salvia just looking beautiful loving its life i see a praying mantis look at that can you guys see that isn't that cute i love these guys oh i hope i have more of them in my next garden okay so moving down here this is Luscious Lantana Pinkberry. I love this color. This is another one that's been kind of slow to get going until we had our heat wave. And now it's doing beautifully, really beautifully. Right behind that, I have my Ladybird Sun Glow Calilophus. This is another really surprising one for me. This one has just been blooming its head off all season long. And then right here, I have Truffula Pink Gomfrina. Um, so these I have repeated quite often throughout my drought tolerant garden bed. You can kind of see here. This garden bed has just been such a success this year. Really, really good. The one plant I don't love is I don't love this high noon Uriops. And the reason why I don't love it is because you do have to come in and deadhead them. I think I've told you guys that before. They're really pretty. I like these cute little, cute little blooms, but the amount that I have to come in here and deadhead for it to look nice, I just, I don't love it. I don't love that. But look at the Ladybird Sun Glow Calilophus. Isn't that beautiful? So they had another color of this one called Lemonade. This is a proven winner's plant. They had another color called Lemonade. <laughs> they are discontinuing the Lemonade color, which is like a paler yellow. And I'm so disappointed that they're doing that because I really like the Lemonade color. I think it is so pretty. Um, I actually had a dream last night that somebody had the Lemonade color and I was begging them to have the plants in my garden because I wanted it. Um, it was just a dream. I can't get my hands on the lemonade color. <laughs> Neither can anybody else unless Proven Winners reintroduces it. So we'll just, <laughs> we'll just have to wait and see. But what a weird dream, right? So more of the Helen Von Stein lamb's ear. This is Iceberg Rose, just looking beautiful and just so easy. And then back here, we have Summerific Hibiscus Berry Awesome. Look at that plant. Look at that plant. Let me see if I can, I don't wanna break anything. Look at how big, oh, isn't that beautiful? So one bloom, will, one flower, one bud will bloom each day and then the rest of them kind of fall underneath. So it's kind of a mess down there. But this is just, such a fantastic summer plant. It's one of my favorite summer plants. I just think it is so beautiful. It brings such a nice, fun, tropical, summery vibe. And then if you look at that, and then you look at the crepe myrtle behind it, oh, I just, I just think it's beautiful. And this is a Texas privet right here. That is nice. I meant to keep it in a pyramid shape and I'm having trouble keeping it in a pyramid shape. <laughs> so, which I knew, I knew that when I got that plant, I knew it was gonna be difficult, um, but it's really pretty and I like the green of it. I just really like Texas privets, but I know they can be quite invasive for some people. So just be careful with that one. This right here is a Salvia Lucantha. This is a white version. I actually have some of the purple versions in my uh, oak tree garden bed, but this plant is just, it's just such a staple. It's drought tolerant. It blooms very late in the season. So, you know, I talk a lot about the Chinese fringe flower. Oh, I wanted to show you guys. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? So imagine the whole plant is covered with that uh, in the early, early, early spring, late winter. So that is early spring color. And then this is the late season color, right? And it's beautiful white. It's really gorgeous. And it's just starting to, to bloom out. You can see it's just starting to really, really go. This plant does get really, really big. So again, give it a little bit more space than I have. And I think it'll be happier. And I think it will shine just a little bit better. Coming over this way, I'm sorry, I feel like I'm 
talking all your your ears off but I'm trying to go around to each and every plant so I don't miss anything so coming over this way this purple plant right here this is called homestead verbena it is one of the best verbenas you can buy um, it is just it's just beautiful I just love this color it is just the best color purple and you can see I planted it with the Kelly Lophus and the blue I'm the purple and the yellow mixed together I just think is really really pretty so I'm liking this combination I will definitely repeat the homestead verbena um, it can handle the heat the hotter it is the better it gets um, it's just it's just a beautiful plant I just love it I wish I had more to say but if you guys want to look up the history of where they found the homestead verbena it's a really sweet story basically it was uh, growing on someone's homestead and um and it was just doing so fantastic. And so the breeders named it Homestead Verbena because it was growing on a homestead, which I just thought was so cute. Okay, so here, this plant right here, this is called a Breath of Heaven. Um, I can't say the real name, Colio, Colionema or something like that. I had a huge one here and a huge one over there by the for sale sign. And we had so much rain this past winter that they both kind of just died. They just up and died. Uh, but this one over here was fine. This one did fine. This one is in a little bit more shade of the crepe myrtle, so it doesn't get as bright chartreuse as these do over here. Um, but this, it's just a great plant. It's such a beautiful plant to have. It smells really good. Um, and it, it does have these like light pink flowers that are really beautiful. I don't love it for the flowers, but I just love it as another shrub. Again, the breath of heaven against the um, Chinese fringe flowers. So the dark versus the chartreuse, I just think is really, really pretty. Okay, then let's talk about my front swoop. So my front swoop is just, it's just my favorite thing. I love it so much. There is kind of a swoop at the new garden. I'll have to show you all. Um, it's not as intense <laughs> as this one, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to make it into my new swoop. Um, so basically my front swoop is a spot that I reserve for annuals every year. And I do that on purpose so that I can change the colors up so that I don't get bored with one thing. Um, so I've had Supertunia Vista bubblegum in here, which was probably my favorite. I've had Supertunia Jazzberry in here. And then this one right here, I have a mix of a whole bunch of yellows. So I have Supertunia um, Saffron Finch, which is a new one for next year. It is a beautiful yellow color and it, it like blends into this creamy yellow. So it's, it's like bright yellow in the throat and then it blends into this creamy yellow, which I think is so pretty. Supertunia Mini Vista Yellow. And then I have uh, uh, let's see. <laughs> I'm trying to look for it. Here you go. Lemon coral sedum, which was a complete waste. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't bother with that. And then right here, these, I was a little bit worried about the lantana. I have two different types of lantana. I have luscious lantana berry blend, which is right here. And then I also have Luscious Lantana Pina Colada. I am loving the Pina Colada. It reminds me of the Citron, Luscious Lantana Citron. It's just a little bit more white. Um, really, really pretty, but I was worried that they were being taken over by the Supertunias. But now that it's gotten hot, they're starting to, starting to grow. I'm a little disappointed in the Berry Blend because this one was supposed to be my big one. This one was supposed to get huge and the Pina colada was supposed to be a little bit smaller and the berry blend is just it's just not performing this year which is too bad because I you know I really wanted that as my pop of like pink like a little bit of contrast in here but you know you can't you can't help it this is this is nature it's gonna do what it wants to do but you can kind of see the pina colada pina colada pina colada you know, it's kind of popping up a little bit. I will have to tell the new owners that the pina colada can stay. Actually, I think all of them can stay and they can probably just leave all of them and just cut everything back and then they'll probably come back next year. Maybe, it depends on how cold of a winter we have for the supertunia, uh, the supertunias, but the lantana can definitely stay. So if they want, they can just leave the lantanas in here and then not worry about planting anything else. Um, so I'm gonna tell them that and you know, we'll have to drive by 
next year and see what they do. <laughs> so, okay. So right here is my Shasta daisies. I just cut it back and, um, I just, I love these plants. I will definitely repeat these plants. Okay. I think I got everything in this garden bed. I'm looking around. I'm pretty sure I got everything. Such a beautiful garden. I'm so proud of myself. I know I keep saying that, but I really am. <laughs> Okay, then we're moving on to my crepe myrtle garden bed. I love this garden bed. I love it. It's been so much fun. Uh, it's just been such an interesting garden bed that has, um, it, it was it was tough. It was really, really hard to think about um, what to plant in this garden bed. As a new gardener, it really helped me out. So this garden bed is a perfect example of having to think about microclimates in a very small space. So you can see the crepe myrtle tree is kind of halfway on in the garden bed. It's a mounded garden bed. It goes up like this. And then you can see this side of the garden bed. It is morning right now. This side of the garden bed gets really great morning sun, really beautiful morning sun. This side of the garden bed that's in shade for a lot of the day gets really harsh, strong afternoon sun that it can like most plants can barely handle. So I've actually had to think about what I was going to plant on this side and what I was going to plant on this side. And I actually had a lot of fun with it. And it's been, you know, a trial and things have died and things have thrived. And, you know, to this day, I'm still, I still think about this garden bed all the time and what I can plant there. And it's just, it's really helped me as a gardener. And, um, I'll always appreciate this garden bed for teaching me about microclimates. Um, but anyway, we have the cow lilies right here. And these cow lilies, they're not looking so hot right now, but don't worry, they're totally fine. Uh, I transplanted these. I found them in my oak tree garden bed when we first moved in, transplanted them over here. They're so happy. They've quadrupled in size or more than that, right? They're so beautiful when they're blooming and I just, I love them so much. What I don't love as much is the lamium that I planted as ground cover underneath here. The lamium is really pretty earlier in the season. It's really even pretty in the winter, but in the summer when it gets hot, 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 it gets crispy. It just gets so crispy and you know, I could give it a ton more water. It probably would appreciate that, but um, there's other more important plants that need more of the water <laughs> that we don't have a ton of. So I just, at my in my new garden, you can see there's spider webs everywhere. Just ignore that. Um, those are not spider mites. Don't worry. They're just regular spider webs. Um, in my new garden, I have even less shade. I have some shade, but I have less shade. So I think I'm just gonna hold off on the lamium until I can have more trees planted and more trees established and more shade because th these are just tough. These are just a hard plant to plant in my climate when it gets hot and dry. And um, I'm sure I could figure it out, but for right now, I'm just gonna, I think I'm gonna take a break on the lamium. What I don't think I will take a break on is these beautiful supertunia blue skies. Uh, I love this plant. I love this plant as a part shade plant. So supertunias are regularly uh, listed as part part sun to full sun. And most supertunias do better when they are in full sun. This is actually one that I don't think does better in full sun. This one I actually think does better in part sun to part shade because the blue color of this plant tends to um, get washed out or fade if it has too much sun. But in the shade, it's just this gorgeous electric blue color. I love it. And then I underplanted it with this uh, Creeping Jenny, which I think is just doing fantastic. So I definitely will repeat this combination for sure. And then over here on the harsh side, where it gets the harsh afternoon sun, I have more Mystic Spires Blue Salvia. I have my Angel Wing Senecio that is struggling since I went on vacation, and I'm pretty sure that there's an irrigation issue right there, um, but I will address that later. I have some Bobo Hydrangeas that are finally starting to bloom out. Um, can you guys see the bark here on this crepe myrtle? This is just the most interesting thing. <laughs> it's just, this is totally normal. This is normal for a crepe myrtle tree. So if you all see this on your crepe myrtle tree, don't think that there's anything wrong. There's nothing wrong. This is just, 
this this is how this is this is normal for it and um i love it i don't love the mess that it makes and i actually pay my girls to come and pick up all this stuff <laughs> so i will be paying them <laughs> to come and pick up all the bark uh, but if you all see that on a crepe myrtle tree that is completely normal all right i have some geraniums these are white geraniums i don't know the names of them i'm sorry pink geraniums over here that I don't know the names of either. Here's some white vinca. I'm loving this vinca. I planted this vinca in my gate and garden bed last year and it thrived and it did fantastic. And I repeated it over here and it thr it's thriving and it's doing fantastic. So I definitely will repeat, be repeating this next year. Then let's see, what is it? Foxtail ferns looking absolutely beautiful. Another one I will definitely be repeating. Here's some white ones, Veronica, right here. Ah, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I can probably cut it back. I think I think they need a little bit more sun, honestly. I think they, they need just a little bit more sun. This is one I will definitely be repeating. This is Hakanakloa um, uh, Areola. I think I'm saying that right. This is like the variegated version. All these... <laughs> All these branches they um there's an all gold version and then this is the areola version and i just love it so much i love this plant i love the movement of this plant i never planted this in my backyard because my dog actually eats this like crazy and i it, it's not toxic for him or anything but um i just didn't want him eating it i don't know why he he just he doesn't eat anything else but he definitely eats this so that's why i only have it up here in my front garden um but i just love it so much so this one i will be repeating for sure okay anything else to show you all in here i don't think so all right, and last but not least, I have my cut flower garden. My cut and come again cut flower garden. I'm gonna miss this, but I'm actually really excited because I have plans for cut flower gardens galore at the new property. Cut flower gardens and veggie gardens, and I'm just gonna have so much space to do so much more. I'm really excited about it. So first I have my sunflower tree. It's looking good. <laughs> It's doing really, really well. Um, it's too high for me to get in there and deadhead it, but that's okay. I just, it's just the funniest thing. It's just such a crack up for how tall it is. Uh, and then over here, I have my gomfrina, which I'm pretty sure is QIS purple. It is not supposed to be QIS purple. It's supposed to be QIS pink, I think, um, but it all came up and it all looks like QIS purple, so that's what it is which is okay it's a beautiful color i love that gomfrina sultane mixed straw flower i've harvested a lot of these for drying already they're beautiful so pretty and then my zinnias my baneri giant pink this is salmon i don't remember what I don't remember the name of those off the top of my head and then this is baneri's giant wine look at that look at that one so i am harvesting let's see today is monday and on thursday i'm going to be harvesting a lot of these flowers to take to a retirement community that robbie from visit our garden goes to um so i'm trying to save a lot of them but there's just kind of like timing that i have to you know i can't leave them on for too long so it's just kind of a timing thing you can see my pin cushion flower mostly has gone to seed this one's this one's kind of done i'm just I'm not super happy with this pin cushion flower these are my favorite this was just a complete mix um but they just go to seed so fast you know um so i think i'm just gonna come here and i'm gonna cut all these back and then back here i have some more sunflowers that are starting to come nowhere they look puny compared to my sunflower tree but that's okay um and then i have my status back here and this it looks like i haven't harvested anything from this status i have harvested so much from this forever happy status so much from it it just there's so much here it just looks like i haven't done anything and then finally i have my afternoon white cosmos that are looking beautiful as well i love this plant look at this one right here this is another one like that pure white butterfly marguerite daisy it's just one of those happy happy flowers that i love and are so classic and they're just so beautiful 
All right, so I think that is it. If you are still watching, thank you. Thank you so much. It just, it means the world to me that you all let me sit here and talk for hours and hours and hours about my garden and about plants and all the wonderful things that I love. So that is it for this garden. That is it for the July front garden tour. Stay tuned tomorrow because I am gonna do the July back garden tour. But this is it for my garden here. I will not be doing another garden tour in this garden. I don't even know if I'll be doing very many more videos featuring the front of this garden. Um, it's so sad. It's so, like, it's so, it's so bittersweet. I'm so happy, but I'm also so sad because I'm gonna miss, I'm gonna miss this garden so much. Um, all right, so it is bittersweet. I am so happy, but I'm also very sad to be leaving this garden and just, I know that it's, it's in good hands. The people who are buying this garden, I know that there it's, I couldn't have, I couldn't have passed this garden along to anybody else, um, better, but I'm going to miss this garden and I'm going to miss hanging out in this garden and thinking about this garden and dreaming about this garden. Um, so thank you all for letting me film. Thank you all for listening to me go on and on. Um, it means the world to me. And I hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today.